The views expressed on the following broadcasts do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, State 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Welcome aboard. Get ready, my friends, for a special treat. Because this <laughs> is the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show. That's right. What do you think of that? Yeah, I wanted to whistle along for a moment there. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, that was pretty good. A lot of brand new theme music for the show. zippity doo da, zippity 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 day Phew, how'd he get today? Ah. Denver's here. Good morning. Marv is here. Yes, I am. Tony is on sabbatical, and the gnomes are here. Yes. Yeah. Look, look at this. I got a brand. Yeah, about them gnomes. I got a wrist gnome. It can hang on my wrist. Yeah. If any of you are on Facebook, uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. And gnomes. So, and so I dropped it. Scott and Lynette Sutton got this for me, and I, and I dropped him last night. And his leg broke off. Oh, 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 I take that as a sign. Right? So I named him <laughs> Peg, as in Peg Leg. Oh, oh, boy. So this is Peg, and he's been he's been gorilla glued back together. What's he made of? <clears throat> a kind of a hard ceramic kind of thing. Yeah. But he just hangs around. Or or he could be a, a gnome mime. mime. He's doing this thing. Never mind. Listeners yeah, can't see I'd what I'm with, talking about. I'd so. go with Peg Leg. Okay, Peg Leg. There we go. Ah! Now I can't get him to stay on the... All right. Behave yourself, Peg. Uh, <coughs> What's your topic today? <coughs> Coughing and spitting and... No, no. What is it? Sneezing. The topic this week is grief and loss. Oh. Not grease and moss. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking of gnomes and grief and... Just, yeah. uh, no. So I went to see Sherlock Gnomes. <laughs> see? Now, Grief. I, I went I'm to telling see, you. I went to see the movie Sherlock Gnomes, and I have to tell you, I was highly disappointed. Now, the first one, Gnomeo and Juliet, that was good. <laughs> that was I'm a, sure it, it was, was good. really good. It. Sherlock Gnomes. Really was horrible. I, I mean, it was well. I, I okay. I, I take it back. It wasn't horrible. It was disappointing. The only thing really good about it was the music. I mean, the, most of the music was all uh, produced by Elton John, and it was it was phenomenal music. But nah, Johnny Depp as Sherlock Gnomes that didn't fly. Um, Michael Caine's voice was in it. Um, so there really is a movie. Oh yeah, you, you oh got yeah. It. You really? Yeah, oh. Nomeo and Juliet yeah. and Sherlock. Or maybe we could check it out. <laughs> no, don't Probably waste your not. money. <laughs> don't waste your money. <laughs> now I now I know I'm a dinosaur. And <laughs> I I'm a sucker for animated movies. I love them. I'm I'm a kid at heart. And this thing, I just I was Marsh had to wake me up a couple times. I was snoring. I was like, Ugh. that was me at the laser light show. You know, I, I remember them when I was younger. Yeah, and they were and, a lot better back oh, then, Oh, right? man, it, Pink Floyd was rocking. I went and seen... Uh, well, you were sober this time. That's why yeah, it wasn't I'm, any good. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, there is a, there are certain events maybe that sh- when you become sober, you might as well just consider it off your bucket list. Right. Stop right there. It's time for Monty Man's <laughs> Wow. There. The producer pushed the button at the wrong time. Wow, I guess I was done. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> End of topic. Anyway, continue on. And I'm, we'll go to the, I'm, have you lost it I'm now? I'm totally lost. <laughs> Gee, many. Wow. So, <laughs> so, yeah, but you're right. And we see, we see things today, and we compare them to yesterday. We go, what happened? Why? I thought that was better than that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a long show. I mean, it's good. Yeah. But it just really, uh, it's not the same. Right. And that's okay. Because I woke up feeling good about it. 
Yeah, I wasn't right, waking up right. looking for a drink. <laughs> well, we were talking about. In fact, we mentioned it at Life Group yesterday about how th- things used to please us. What they used to really, we used to get a kick out of. And I talked about that movie, The Talented Mr. Ripley, that I yeah, bought yeah. from the thrift that store. That we hunted down for you. I hunt, Yeah, we looked for that because I thought, man, this movie is great. The acting in it is, is super. <laughs> well, the acting was super, but it was disgusting, the movie. I'm, I'm watching it, and I'm going, <laughs> oh, why? What did I ever see in this thing? This is trash. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. It was like, it was like uh, Risky Business with, with uh, Tom Cruise years ago. I thought that was like the end all be all of, of of movies, and then I watched it several years later, after my whole attitude changed about spiritual matters and everything. And I'm like, this is disgusting. I mean, it was all about prostitution and hooking up when your parents aren't there, and I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, no, thank you. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all right, so uh, Money Man's Weekly Wine. I don't have one, but Denver does. Yeah, yeah, I got a little one. I won't get on a, on a Dennis Miller rant about it. Oh, come on. I loved watching that show. Boy, he'd start out nice and calm, and he'd just let them have it. <laughs> um, my rant, my little bitty one here today, is uh, these people, we get expensive phones nowadays. We have smartphones, right? Right. Well, uh, I, I went to reach two people the other day, and neither one of them have their mailbox set up yet. And, and these... These people are involved in ministry, and they need to be accessible, right? Yeah, we need. I'm not calling you to see uh, what color underwear or shirt you're wearing that day. I really don't care about that. When I call, it's usually with some kind of uh, "I have a question" or yeah. it's a priority that needs to get done. So uh, it just bothers me that they won't get their mailbox set up. I Please, agree, Please, people. If you're going to have a smartphone, be smart enough to get a mailbox set up so that I can get a hold of you. I won't bother you. And this sometimes, if you're going to screen your call, even that's cool, I guess. Sure. But I'm not calling you just to chat about the weather. Right. I got something to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. Now, I, now that you've said that, though, so we have a phone line here in the studio. It's a landline. And very few people have that number. The people that have that number in the past are people that we've done phone interviews with. Yeah, I don't think I have that number. Okay, and so that's all we use it for. So it is not set up in any way, shape, or form for incoming calls. But I don't give it out unless I'm doing an interview, and then I explain it to people. So if somebody mistakenly calls that number, you're not going to. It's not going to get answered. I got a question for you. Yeah. Now, keeping in line with the fact that that I admit freely I'm a dinosaur, okay? <laughs> I I have a flip phone. Yeah. yeah. So what happens when people call me is it lets me know that I have a voicemail. Gotcha. Now, doesn't smartphones do that? <laughs> They're supposed to. Yeah, because you, you're supposed I don't to know set how it up. many people I've called, no, they had voicemail. Right. And they don't and return I, your leave, call? I leave a message, and the next time I talked to him, I said, did, did you get my message? Well, no, we, I didn't even know you called. Okay, so there's a couple so, things going on. They're lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the I, opening one. I never they thought of that. They don't want to talk to a dinosaur. <laughs> now, if it was a horse, they don't lie to you. So, but no, uh, e- either that or what's more likely is they probably don't know how to operate their smartphone to the degree that they should, and they probably have their notification turned off. So you're, it's saying that it's delivered on your end, but um, as far as they're concerned, they're not hearing it. They're not, they're not getting the ding or the whatever it is they, they're supposed to get. There's a notification oh. thing, and they may have it muted and not even realize it. And the, the thing about smartphones is when they update, sometimes when they update, it resets everything to default. So you have to go back in and customize your settings again. And mm-hmm. that's kind of a, that's an annoyance. And they're getting better about that, but sometimes that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't understand. I've never heard anybody talk about having problems with their flip phone. But <laughs> I hear a lot of people you talking betcha. about having problems with smartphones. Oh yeah, and you know so, you're paying through the nose for those things, and it's a constant. Yeah. You know, and I, I would if it wasn't for 
the business end of Take 12 Radio, I would go back to a flip phone in, in an instant. I had a little uh, Virgin Mobile hand phone. You could, I could close my hand. You couldn't even see it. Yeah. That was the sweetest little phone. I didn't have to worry about anything because I wasn't into texting. I didn't need I just didn't answer my phone, check my messages. That's all I needed for. I'll never go back because my smartphone and I, yeah, we are Google freaks. Oh, you no. pull you pull something out of your hat and want to impress me with your knowledge. Yeah, I'll find out <laughs> because it, don't you know it's true if Google says something. <laughs> if you know you you know it's true. Oh, yeah 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 yeah. All right, this week uh, <laughs> shout outs to Matt, Josh, Marco, Stan, Lisa, Carol, Ken, Kyle, Roger, Patrick, Donald, Kevin, and Audrey. Woohoo! There you go. Howdy. Hey, Audrey. Uh, Audrey. You mm. forgot something. You said you had a, a weekly win. I do have a weekly win. All right. Don't forget that because we need it. All right. We do need a weekly win. Here we go. You ready? Oh, my. Hallelujah. 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 Just in time. Something positive. <laughs> yeah. So um, I will tell you that... This week has been extremely challenging uh, on more than one issue. Uh, you know, it rain, when it rains, it pours, right? And we're in Oregon. <clears throat> oh, gee. Big drops close <clears throat> together. <laughs> so <clears throat> the, the opportunity to withdraw into yourself, to, to allow depression and anxiety and stress and worry and resentments and all that stuff just take you out um, often comes our way and it can come our way through other people's behavior, the environment, depending on the weather um, or just situations that are just out of our control. And this was one of those weeks. I mean, it was just one thing after another, after another. And, 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 you know, God, God always seems his timing is just so beautiful and so last night at our life group um it was so supportive and we you know people can sense when you're having a hard time yeah. you don't have to talk about it you don't have to go into detail which we we didn't we didn't do any of that but they just knew something was up and to have 18 people come alongside you and say wow can we pray for you we can tell you're having a rough time I mean, there's nothing like that to have those kind of people in your life, and uh, it's it's refreshing, and we need people like that. Uh, Colin, my 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 youngest son, is doing an internship <clears throat> at at the church he attends. Uh, they just did a thing where they talked about everybody needs four key people in their life, and I can't remember exactly all of them, but I mean, one, one's a prophet, somebody that that can uh, call you on your stuff and can read you like a book and say, you know what, something's up with you. We need to talk. Those aren't always pleasant. No, they're not. <laughs> but to have that in your yes. life, uh, the encourager, somebody that can encourage you and come alongside you and, and say, hey, man, we got this, but let's do it together. Let's let's press forward. Somebody who's a teacher, somebody that, that you can sit under and learn, and then a mentor, somebody that that you admire and um, that you, you, you want some of their qualities and that kind of thing. You have these key people in your life um, many of us are fortunate to have a lot of those people in our lives. We may not give them those titles. We may not even realize it to that degree. But when you're in recovery fellowships, there's a lot of those people available, and they're, they're just there. And to have that in a group of people in a life group or a 12-step support meeting or, or whatever it is that you do, um, it's priceless. And, and it's, it's really good. It's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the win. All right. There you go. That is a win. Yeah, that is a win. Absolutely. So we're going to be talking about uh, grief and loss, and uh, there is a grief cycle that happens uh, when we move into an area of our life where grieving starts to take place or we experience loss. Maybe it's a loss of a friendship. Maybe it's a loss of a job. We certainly know that there's grieving going on when we walk away from substances. There's actually a grieving process there. I mean, Jack Daniels and Wild Turkey, uh, they were my uh, buddies. <laughs> you know, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, but 
Listen to this. Addiction cost Oregonians $5.9 billion annually. Hi there. This is Monty Meyer, CEO of Oregon's Take 12 Recovery Radio, with an urgent message for everyone who calls Oregon home. Did you know that in regards to adequate addiction treatment, there is no single point of accountability or authority within our state government and that there are no people in recovery in the decision-making roles? For this to change, we need you to stand with us. We are Oregon Recovers, and we recognize the frustration of no meaningful prevention programs, long wait times for treatment, and poor aftercare. Isn't it time to get off the sidelines and plug into a solution that is stable and lasting? To begin that process, visit us at OregonRecovers.org and stand with us today. That's OregonRecovers.org. The time is now. This is Jerry Vandiver, and you're listening to Take12Radio.com, recovery talk and positive music. Welcome back. There it is again, that there it whistling. Is. The whistling. Yes. <laughs> that makes me want to whistle. <clears throat> makes me feel chipper. Chipper. Oh. Chipper. Chipper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, oh, before I forget, before I forget, so uh, Mar- Marv does cowboy poetry, and he does music, and he does all that stuff. So uh, if you're from the area that we're broadcasting from, you may want to check out Saturday, April 14th at 1 p.m. at Kirk's Ferry in Brownsville, Oregon, Cowboy poetry and music is going to be going on. Yes. And Denver and I are going to go. Are you going to go? I'm going well, to go. I'm gonna, if I can uh, make it, I'm yeah. going. Yeah. I'm going to pencil it in at least because uh, that sounds good. So what are you going to do, Marv? Are you going to blow our minds? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm going to have a lot of fun, though. Yeah, Excellent. It's, it's going to be fun. Excellent. There's going to be some great... Uh, well, we're hoping this is kind of a test situation yeah. where, where uh, a guy by the name of Jim Crotz, this is his uh, plan, and and uh, we've been looking into where to go, and right, uh, and so it's it's really pretty exciting. We don't really know how many people are going to show up. It's just kind of off the wall, yeah, thing. But um, cowboy poetry, cowboy music is uh getting to be uh on the rise again people, that's great people are enthused about it and so we're hoping for a good time we were in uh prescott and uh they had a big convention going right on up there. prescott arizona yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. it's definitely on the map oh yes uh elko nevada really uh, that's uh inter- internationally people come from all over the world and go to elko wow. to the awesome. cowboy poetry gathering awesome so so that's Saturday, April 14th, 1 p.m., Kirk's Ferry. It's a restaurant in Brownsville. I can probably even wear my hat for that occasion. Ooh, bet. Maybe I'll wear my spurs, my gnome spurs. Why don't you leave those here? Why don't you leave the gnome spurs here? Okay. <laughs> We're going to Brownsville. <laughs> and and this Wednesday on Take 12 Recovery Radio, Mike Lindell, the CEO for My Pillow. Uh, will be on the show sharing his story of experience, strength, and hope, and the power of God in his life to overcome addictive behaviors. Um, I own a my pillow. Actually, we own three my pillows, and they're all my pillow. They would be your pillows. Well, actually, one's Marsha's pillow, and one's Colin's pillow, and one's my pillow. But they're all my pillows. See what I did there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty greedy <laughs> sounding. And then next month, I think it's on the 11th. Sherry Gaba. The uh, uh, editor in chief for uh, let me see, hold on. I'm looking over here. Recovery Day magazine. She's going to be with us, so that's going to be exciting. Is that live or no? Well, it'll be it'll be over get, the phone. Over the phone, it'll be yeah. a phone interview with Cherry Gaba. Yeah, so, there you go. All right. Um, so grief and loss. Everybody grieves differently. Everybody grieves. The timelines are different, you know, but have you ever had anybody say, why aren't you over that yet? I mean, come on, move on, Marv. Hmm. Right? Move on, Denver. I mean, gee whiz, it's been a year. Well, Denver's just, <laughs> Denver's just a cold ice block. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I can talk about that later. Yeah, Denver, go sit in the peanut gallery. <laughs> um, grief, grief is really... It, it it can be 
debilitating. It can paralyze you. Um, I remember when... It can do when, more than that. Huh? It can do more than that. Yeah, so expand, expound on that. Um, well, I happen to have been uh, a recipient of extreme depression and anxiety attacks. Right. Uh, a couple of years ago, and, and actually just in the last few months, I've been kind of pulling out of it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I visited some counselors, and right. um, just about everything that was going on had to do with uh, grief or loss of some kind because I'd stuffed it. I stuffed a whole bunch of stuff. Wow, <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, several times in a hospital, and yeah. Sure. It, it can, for some people, uh, depending, it it can get pretty rough. It can take you. It can take <clears throat> the most positive driven person and take them out. It's that strong. <clears throat> um, so there, there's actually there's actually and, go ahead. There, and I don't I don't believe. Uh, you know, part part of my thinking back two years ago was, mm-hmm. if you were to ask me then, well, this is how you do this. This is how you grieve, and it's going to take this long. Yeah, boy, was I wrong because right. I have no clue. That's right. People are going to do it different. It's going to take a shorter amount of time or a longer period of time. Yeah, it's it's kind of a mystery type thing to me. And it, it, it's such <clears throat> it, it it's such a um, it attaches itself to our psyche, to our self-esteem, to our thought processes, and everybody's metabolism is different. Everybody's chemical reaction to things are different. Um, Brain chemistries are different. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you can't really, it's really unfair to say, well, you ought to be over that by now, or come on, let's move on, or or whatever. Uh, It's it's very mysterious. Um, There are ways to effectively move through it but i would hesitate to say there's a cure for it it's more of a journey um but there's there's a cycle of grief that the psychologists have gone by for a long time and psychiatrists and so forth and it's pretty accurate uh and uh, so i'm going to go through this really fast um usually what happens if we're going to put labels to something, this is a pretty good one. Usually what happens is when we first get hit with something that is grieving or upsets us to the extreme, we go into protective mode. And we go, we'll go. we move into to a denial phase. It's like, well, this really is, you know, it's kind of like if you lose a loved one. If you've been approached by a police officer that says that your husband was just killed you might go you're lying to me that's not true i just saw him 20 minutes ago that's not true and it's just an automatic denial response to to help you survive it the interesting thing about denial is it can be actually very beneficial for us uh there's a story about a guy who was in a foxhole during the war and a, a bomb blew, blew up, and it killed everybody around him, and he survived it. And he crawled out of the foxhole, and he was slowly trying to make his way to the MASH unit, uh, the medical uh, facility, and he got about halfway there, and he f- felt something wet on his on his chest, left-hand side of his chest. He didn't know what it was. Um, and he kept going, and when he got there, and when he woke up, because he passed out, and they found him, when he woke up, his arm was gone. Well, what he felt was the blood. But his body went into denial phase. He, If he had realized what had happened, he would have never made it to the mass unit. So the denial actually helped him get to the to the place where he needed to be to, to get help. Um, and so it's a survival thing. And we'll go from that usually, and then it'll move into anger. <clears throat> I had a situation happen this week, <clears throat> and my first response was, what? That's impossible. My second response was, I got really teed. I was really, really angry. 
and I didn't have real. I didn't know who to be angry at. I, the situation, the people involved. I just didn't know. I was just. I was just so angry. And uh, then we'll go into a thing called bargaining. <clears throat> well, God, if you'll do this with this situation, I'll do this. <laughs> 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 been there <laughs> okay so we can grieve like 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 when i my first dui i ever got yeah right <clears throat> i'll never do that again. i was definitely grieving you know why did i drive and drink you know and first the first thing when i got stuck in the back of the california high patrol car was like this isn't happening <laughs> this just isn't happening oh it's happening <laughs> Right? It's real. And I remember when I was a little kid thinking, all right, when my mom spanks me, I'll just pretend like it's not happening. <laughs> well, that never eyes. worked well, but I'm going, this isn't happening. And then I got angry with myself. What did I do this for? And then I started bargaining, God, if you just get me out of jail, I'll never drink again. Just get me out of here. There's crazy people in here. Yeah, there is. And they're all bargaining, too. They're going, get me out of here. That guy's nuts. You know, but we'll bargain and we'll try. <laughs> we'll try to make these contracts with God or with other people and then it'll move into depression and and and, and that's very common and you talked about that, that mm-hmm. you know and the depression we can get stuck there and that that's usually where a lot of people in that cycle really get stuck and make bad decisions mm-hmm. right yeah um and, and, and we would draw and i remember being so depressed one time that I sat in my chair from morning until the sun went down, and when the when the sun went down, I couldn't even reach over to turn the lamp on. It was like I couldn't move. It, it, and you can't explain it really, other than something like that. You really can't explain it effectively unless you've been through it, right, Marv? Right. I mean, it, it just yeah. people go, "Well, you're kidding me. Why couldn't you just buck up and do better?" Yeah. Well, if you haven't experienced it. You you just don't know. And then in that cycle after depression will come guilt. And we beat ourselves up and and we we just thrash on ourselves and you know, what could I have done differently? Why didn't I say this to that person? Why didn't I do that? What did I do wrong? I must have blown it somehow. Otherwise they wouldn't have reacted this way or they wouldn't have done what they did. A lot of parents will go through that. We must have raised our child wrong. What did we do wrong? You hear that a lot. And then it moves into obsession. And that's where we got to fix it. Man, I got to fix this. I got to I got to take care of this. This has got to be I got I got to make sure it all turns out okay. And we become obsessed by fixing the situation. And then finally, when we realize that we can't fix it, it moves into acceptance. And we say, "Well, here we are. And that's usually somewhere in between acceptance and letting go is the surrender that happens. Um, if if the surrender doesn't happen, if we don't surrender it to God, we'll go right back into denial again, and the cycle keeps going around and around and around and around. And usually what happens more times than not is we end up in depression and we get stuck there. Um. <clears throat> making bad choices. Yeah, making bad choices and and, yeah. and and medicating. Going back to what we know on how on how to medicate or withdrawing. So I'm thinking, what about when I blow it? What about when I do something? Well, it's not anybody else, but it's me. And I'm the one that has been the knucklehead. And instead of pressing into God, instead of making myself accountable to other people, instead of instead of, you know, Suiting up and showing up and pressing in, I pull back, I isolate. Isolation leads to depression and then the guilt, the bargaining and all that stuff, and I get stuck. So, Denver, you said you're kind of kind of a hard nut to crack. No, I used to work to callous. Callous, yeah. Yeah, uh, when the topic got brought up, uh, I was thinking of, you know, it's been a long time since I lost family members. Right. And uh, I went through grieving processes. Uh, I don't know if the diagram 
was accurate for what I went through during that time. And because, this is this isn't necessarily going this order for everybody, right? Yeah, uh, because I was uh, medicating heavily enough that I could didn't have a lot of order in my life. Mm. Period. You know, uh, right? But being what it is now, um, that diagram that yeah. you read off there is pretty accurate. I would think. You know, uh, the one thing I do know and I will testify to is that when I was in my addiction, making bad choices, I would get on that self grieving party. Yeah. And I would get into my depression mode and I would just, uh, isolation's horrible in that state because, uh, you go through every one of those things you clicked off there and I would just continue to drink. It's hard to get out of that depressed state. And the only thing I knew that would take care of that at that time was to drink more. Just make it so numb that I couldn't feel anything. Mm. There, I didn't go through... I don't understand it anyways. The whole, the whole <clears throat> thing of life is amazing to me. Sure. You know, it's just uh, there's so many bumps and hiccups and everything else that we are faced with daily. It's like a, it's got tentacles. It's, it's just like it's so. It comes, it comes at you at every yeah. angle, on every level. Everything can just barrage you. Uh, if it wasn't for having uh, my higher power, you know, mm -hmm. to just sometimes scream out to and sometimes just to to say something to I would probably go nuts. Yeah. And I and and that makes me amazed because I was 55, 56 before I even realized that uh I needed something bigger than me. Mm -hmm. What did I do for those years? Mhm. Mm crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I don't know how I survived. Right. Right. I mean I did, I was in a bottle the whole time. I was numb. And, and you know, I and I was speaking to our our uh, our our tools of addiction, if you will, the bottle, the needle, the the pipe, the 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 pornography, the food, the wh whatever it is. Um, that's the tail wagging the dog. We become, in a weird way, in a very sick way, we become allies with that thing, and we'll step over our grandmother's grave to get that. And fulfill that addiction. It, it's a survival tool. It is. It, it is. And so so it, it becomes our friend, very sick friend, but it becomes our friend. And when we get into recovery, our friend's not there anymore. We, we, we've, re, we've released it, or at least we're attempting to. And it's much more than just, just stop using <laughs> Yeah, you know, right? I mean, because this thing is this thing's been my comrade. This has been the way I've coped for years, and now I'm grieving this. I mean, I've talked to people that have even grieved their cigarettes. I mean, really grieved it because it it was it was their go to, it was automatic, mm. and and now they're battling this addiction to nicotine, and they're going through all this stuff. They're bargaining. Well, okay, I'll quit tomorrow. God, if you will just give get me, me this, get, get me through and allow me to uh, smoke just one cigarette an hour or one cigarette a day, I'll quit tomorrow. I mean, there's all sorts of bargaining that goes on. Um, and I mean, it, it's really a conundrum, but it's real and it happens. And we're going to go through it in life. There's no, you can't avoid this. Right, Mark? You can't avoid grief. No, to me, when that happened to me, it was like somebody flipped the light switch. Yeah. Boom, that quick. Right. And I was insane, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, another way to put it, uh, years ago they talked about people having nervous breakdowns. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I had. I had a breakdown. Right, right. <clears throat> Yeah, we think of we think of oh, you know, Grandma Jane had a nervous breakdown and ended up in a mental institution. And yeah. She's in a straight jacket, and they're putting her through shock therapy. We, that's what we think, right? But it's not necessarily like that. We can have a nervous breakdown and just disappear and lock ourselves in our in our house. 
um, our friend Mike D talks about how he would, he, he, when he was in the height of his addiction, he would nail the door shut. Yeah. He was he was he was so paranoid and so upset and so you know so he was you don't want anybody coming in you don't want anybody knocking on the door and so he took these huge nails and nailed his windows and doors shut you know um, can you imagine so that was a protective thing can you imagine having to grieve that behavior I, I grieved some of my behavior it was like I'm saying goodbye to this because in our recovery literature it talks about being done for good and for all. Really? For good and for all? That's a long time. That's a long time to, yeah. to think that I can't have my friend back. I, don't you know I really like a pineapple daiquiri? I, I miss <laughs> I miss him. I miss him. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so that's inanimate objects. I mean, what about when we miss people? What about when people don't die, but they leave? I've had that, too. Or they just disappear. <laughs> I've, been, I've been through the whole route. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. What about when you have to say goodbye to somebody because they're unhealthy, they're toxic, or a group of people because they're toxic? You're, you're going to probably grieve that for a time. You know, there's another scenario I'll just bring up real quick. Yeah. Um, when... Uh, 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 the only experience I can talk about really is my own. Sure. So here, uh, when this happened, okay, I was a Christian. I'd been sober for 28 years. And can you imagine what it seems and feels like when that you wake up and you're insane and you're thinking to yourself, what in the hell is going on. I've got 28 years sobriety. I've, you know, I've done all the things and I love the know. Lord. Yeah. 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 So how can this possibly be? Right. And 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 I've been trying to uh, as much as I can in meetings and stuff convey that message and Monty, you said it earlier. Time doesn't mean that much. You know, it really doesn't. I mean, it it gives us experience. It gives us experience, but then, uh, man, it, it stuff happens, boy. It does. Yeah. So uh, one of the one of the gals at uh, Albany Celebrate Recovery posted this. Um, it's an article. It, it's it's not very long. It says it's entitled "God Said No." It says, "I asked God to take away my habit. God said no." It's not for me to take away, but for you to give up. I asked God to make my handicapped child whole. God said no. His spirit is whole. His body is only temporary. I asked God to grant me patience. God said no. Patience is a byproduct of tribulations. It isn't granted. It's learned. I asked God to give me happiness, and God said no. I give you blessings. Happiness is up to you. I asked God to spare me pain. God said, no. Suffering draws you apart from worldly cares and brings you closer to me. I asked God to make my spirit grow. God said, no. You must grow on your own, but I will prune you to make you fruitful. I asked God for all things that I might enjoy life. And God said, no. I will give you life so that you might enjoy all things. I asked God to help me love others as much as he loves me. And God said, ah, finally, you have the idea. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I'll take a copy of that. Okay. All right. And and so <laughs> that can be painful, the word No. <laughs> You're like a god of no. <laughs> um, but we go through these things. We go through these tribulations and these hardships. And, and I, I just want to encourage people, don't pull back. Don't pull back. When, when you're going through what you think is the, is the most difficult time in your life, the last thing you want to do is isolate. I know it's the first go-to. I've done it, and it's never paid off. I'll go visit tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, l- losing people, losing things, people grieve things. I mean, you just ask anybody who's lost their house in a fire. You know, the memories, the pictures, the the uh, family heirlooms. I, I, that's never happened to me. I'm kind of a normie in that area. I, I don't, I've never experienced that. But I can only imagine. Oh, that's a movie. Mm. Which I saw, by the way, which was absolutely superb. Um, but moving through this stuff in life is, is part of our journey. And um, I think, I don't think anybody can escape it. I, I You know, I mean, shoot, when my doc Sakima when we had to put Sakima down, I grieved that more than I grieved my own mother passing away. And I had a hard time understanding that. And I think maybe some of it was my dog had been my best friend for years and they don't judge you. They don't, you know what I mean? It was just right. so, such a cool, cool thing. Um, we can grieve before the incident happens, too. Oh, yeah. What happens when you know that you're going to have to leave a situation but you haven't left yet? Are you going to have to put your pet down but you haven't yet? Or you know, we, can, we can start the grieving process before it ever happens because we know what's coming. So you said, yeah. So why did you say, yeah? Uh, I future trip Oh, okay. is, is why I say that. And I still suffer. With that, you know, I, Matthew six thirty four talks about that, mm-hmm. but I still struggle with that area in my life, and uh, right. I grieve over it. You know, worry you call it whatever you want, but sure. it, but it's a grief, worrying about yeah. what's going to take place way before it happens, and uh, this is all it's going to unfold. You know, one way or another, right. as my friend says, it's going to be all right, or it ain't. Right, it's going to take place. So. uh I, I'm really learning to uh, put less uh, effort into worrying, and, right. it's, and it's difficult. It's difficult, or grieve, whatever you want to call it. It is. Depending on what our life experience has been <clears throat> before we hit a, one of these grief walls that we ends up knocking us over, will we'll depend a lot on, on how we react to it. Um, if we've had major trauma in our life, if we've been abused in our life, if if we've been one of those who withdrew. My mom was like that. She withdrew all the time. Um, and then when, except for with me and my dad. And so my dad and I, we were her whole life. God wasn't her number one. We were her number one. And that's not healthy. Um, and so when my dad passed away and I, of course I'm married and out of the house, right? She, it wasn't long before she passed away and mentally she wasn't doing well. Um, and we, we hear this about married couples a lot of times, uh, when they are so connected to each other and, and God isn't a part of their relationship, and that other person is their number one, their one and only, they, you know, you complete me and all that kind of stuff, that when something happens to them, the other person follows not too far behind and they pass away. Uh, one of the things that Marsha and I agreed on when we lit that unity candle at our wedding was that we weren't going to put so much of ourselves into the other person where we lost ourselves. Because if something happens to one of us, we need to be able to have some of ourself, God first, so we can be okay. And we're living in a world today where people are so dependent on people mm-hmm. and situations and the way things turn out and that kind of thing instead of being dependent on God. Um, and quite frankly, God is the only one that's never going to leave you or forsake you. <clears throat> people are going to leave intentionally unintentionally it's just you know the cycle of life i suppose so there we go grief and loss it's inevitable what's that saying pain is inevitable suffering is optional 
What are you going to do with it? There's people listening to this show right now. I mean, I have been reading on Facebook so many people who have lost their parents just recently uh, through cancer or Ill- other illnesses or just past quietly. I've seen three of them just in the last couple of days. Mom passed quietly in her sleep last night. You know, it's going to happen. What are you going to do with it? Uh, so that's a, that's that's an answer only, you know, each individual can answer. But I, I just got to say, don't don't pull back, don't isolate. Please don't isolate. Talk to somebody. Please talk to somebody. I mean, with every ounce of strength that you have, you know, pick up that phone. Um, tell somebody. You know what? I I I can't. I have no power. I can't even get out of my house. But but say something to somebody. Because what'll happen is if it if it engulfs you and swallows you up, it it can it can kill you. It can kill you and it doesn't have to. Any closing thoughts from you guys? One thing I was thinking about, um I talk a lot in meetings and stuff about uh, you know, I'll hang my hat on something. Right. You know, like uh, there's a way that seems right to a man, the end there is a way of death. I'll right. hang my hat and ah. try to keep that in mind, you know. Well, one of the things I mistakenly come up with here a while back, I mean, five years ago or so, it, it became my opinion um, due to my experience that God doesn't care how we feel. Mm-hmm. And and I can back that up in a whole lot of different ways, uh, mainly because of what I've been through. If he cared right. about, uh, if he cared about the way we feel, or um, then I wouldn't have, in my opinion, it, because he loves us, then I wouldn't have had to go through what I did. And a lot of people think that. Well, God loves me, so why am I going through this stuff? You know, why doesn't He spare me from the grief? Why yeah, doesn't He spare yeah. me? You know, He. I want Him to care about my itty bitty feelings, so I don't have to go through this stuff. But what what uh, what I've changed my mind about is uh, God doesn't care how we feel right this minute. He cares about what's going to happen when we get through it. Mm. And. I don't know why I went through what I did. Yeah. It was horrendous. Yeah. Suicide and drinking was very real, a very good option to me. It didn't have to happen, thank God. Yeah. But um, I have to believe that because of that, what I went through, Mm -hmm. that something is going to change Um. That's part of God's plan. Right. Somewhere along the line, and I may not realize it or see it at the time mm-hmm. or something. And uh, and so as I've struggled the last few months to try to uh, heal up, that's been part of my thinking. Um, okay, God's got something better in mind. God, what can I do to further your kingdom? Sure type of thing sure yeah amen any thoughts Denver to close out the show I'm thinking on him oh see there's thoughts he's thinking he, on he has a propensity <laughs> to ponder <laughs> I'm just thinking on yeah it's a uh, it's a daily thing no matter you know little grief big grief it's still grief yeah the pain of, I read something the other day pain is real doesn't matter what level it comes in at it's real. Right. So. Yep. Denver, how can they listen to this show? All right. Let's give this a whirl. Uh, you can listen or download any of our shows by going to take12radio.com. All right. Take12radio.com <laughs> and clicking on follow me on Podomatic. Once there, you can download our app on Android or iOS, and you can comment on our shows, love us or hate us. We'd love to hear from you either way. Uh, and you can also listen to the show on our YouTube channel. Simply go to Take12Radio.com and click on the YouTube icon. And if you'd like to send us our uh, your email, our email address will be at Take12Radio at Comcast.net. That'll be Take12Radio 
at comcast.net. All righty then. Our closing song <clears throat> is by our friend uh, Freebo. He's a recovery recording artist. You can visit his website at freebomusic.com. Uh, listen, time goes by really fast. Things go by fast. If you don't believe me, <clears throat> wait till you're 62 or older and you if, pull out pull out your high school yearbook and you go, what happened? <laughs> what were you going to say? I, I got a reunion this year. <clears throat> I never, got one too, never, yeah. never been to one. Uh, just never cared to, I guess. And uh, this year, I believe I'm going to go. You're going to go? Yep. Health welling. Yeah. <clears throat> you will go. What? That's what I did. I'm just looking at people <laughs> going. And there's those certain people <clears throat> that still look the same. And you're going, what in the world happened to me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Time goes by really fast. Look, look at it. it if you're going through grief, if you're going through loss, you know, nobody can tell you when you're going to, when and how and everything, but you can lean on God. And the deal of it is, again, don't, please don't isolate. Don't stay there too long. Um, time goes by too fast. And before you know it, uh, it, it will have come and gone and you'll still be. Tomorrow, I, tomorrow uh, will have slipped away if you don't move today. Yeah. Amen to that. All right, here's Freebo with It Goes By Fast. When I was a boy walking down by the tracks, what in the world did I know? The world wasn't flat, I was faster than Jack. That I'd never grow old Time is a game of hide and seek It will catch you when it can Now I'm walking along those tracks Trying to understand When I fell in love What in the world did I know Hypnotized those beautiful eyes Lost in a world of my own Love is a game of hide and seek It will blind you cause it can But I find my way And I live each day Trying to understand Recovery recording artist Freebo. For more of Freebo's great music, 
Check out his website at freebomusic.com. Hey, listen, until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with the Take 12 Recovery Radio family, and we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting.